What's up guys, it's Tony from Backwoods Biker Magazine and Wood Tramp Outdoors. Uh, thank you Greg from Klamath Falls, Oregon, asking the question, uh, what do I think about blankets versus sleeping bags? Hang tight, be right back. Greg, uh, it's not only for you, but for a, a lot of people that have asked that question, uh, I do get it on a regular basis. Um, and let me just kind of uh, give you a, a quick overview. Uh, you know, blankets have been around for centuries. Uh, you know, they've taken blankets out of um, pyramids that have been made out of woven reeds, uh, leaves, uh, and you know, so that, that takes you back, you know, uh, 2000, 2500 BC, 3000 BC, somewhere around there. So blankets have been around for a long, long time. Um, it wasn't until uh, about the 14th century, uh, which would be the 1300s, uh, that what we know as blankets now uh, were actually produced. And uh, they have got their origins, they've linked them to a man whose name was Thomas Blanket, a uh, Finnish man, uh, that was a weaver and a wool merchant. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, um, there's a lot of people that believe that his name was different than Blanket, that the Blanket wasn't named after him, but he was named after the Blanket, just much like the blacksmiths of the day. All of them have the same name, Smith after the, being a blacksmith, you know, so if you were Joe Smith, that meant that you were Joe the blacksmith. So that's where uh, that came from. And what um, Thomas Blanket did was developed what we know to be the woolen blanket. Um, and it was all done in, on, by hand on a hand loom, um, virgin wool, very, very fine blankets uh, were made, you know, and then by the time they hit our shores, they were quite the hot commodity. They were very expensive, um, and they were not readily available because the machining process yet, you know, the uh, huge mills that we know of today didn't exist. Uh, so it was all by hand, and there were some great benefits with that. And the benefits were that hand looming with virgin wool meant that it was going to be a fluffy style blanket that would trap heat. You know, that's what a wool blanket does. Uh, some of the natural properties are is that it not only trap heat, but it is very fire retardant. Um, it is water resistant, and it will actually retain anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of its insulating value even when it gets wet, which is quite advantageous. And that's why many of the pioneers that trekked across what is now the United States um, were very, very dependent upon woolen blankets. They made shelters out of them, they sleep systems in them, they used them for cloaks with a, with a blanket pin, you know, on them, you know, they built hoods with them, you know, it's just been very dependent. So how do I compare those to a sleeping bag? First of all, you know, there's you know, sleeping bags are, are a lot more modern, um, and, you know, back during Kephart's days, he actually mentions a sleeping bag, but he's not very advantageous with it. He doesn't like them, uh, you know, and for the same reason he doesn't like them, I don't like them either. Uh, even when I was in the military, I did not like being zipped up in a containment system, you know, that if something jumped off, that I had to zip out, and then I had to jump out. You know, I just didn't care for that. It just seemed to be very, very uh, uh, dangerous for me. Uh, and even when you're in the wilderness situation, uh, and, uh, you know, an animal walks up into your camp, uh, hopefully it's just nothing more than a raccoon or a curious possum. Uh, but if you happen to be in part of the bush where uh, cougars roam or bears roam, you know, then you're you're just a uh, you know nice meal in a uh, fluffy burrito, and that's why I really don't care for uh, sleeping outdoors in you know the wilderness situations in a sleeping bag. Have I done it? Absolutely, and I 
You know, at one time, if you remember old videos, I had a bunch of sleeping bags that were hung up out here because you got to hang your your bags up. You know, and I, I love the sleeping bags that I do have because they work very well and they take me down to the temps that I, I want to be out in. Uh, but when it really comes down to it, my favorite sleep system is the wool blanket system just because it has so many advantages over a sleeping bag. A sleeping bag is made for sleeping. You know, if you need to keep warm, you get in your sleeping bag. Uh, it's sleeping. But with a wool blanket, you can use that as shelter. I just told you this. And just, you can use it as a shelter. You can use it as a cloak. You can uh, use it uh, to, to sleep in. A lot of advantages. But with that being said, wool blankets are like anything else. Not all wool blankets are created equal. I mentioned that uh, the advantage of having a, a hand-loomed wool blanket is the fact that it's virgin wool and it's not real tight. It's, it's kind of loose. And because of that, you get a lot of loft with it. And with loft, we understand now that you know, the heat traps in that loft, and that's exactly why you stay warm. So, you know, with me saying that, you know, if you're going to want to go out and buy a blanket, a wool blanket, just don't run down to um, Harbor Freight, because I've seen the Harbor Freight blankets. They have a purpose. They can be used for different things. But it shouldn't be the main blanket that you you have with you, you know. Um, for me, you're going to see some of the blankets that I got down here today for, for you to take a look at. You know, at the very least, you carry two uh, blankets. You carry a, a, a mid-level blanket, and then you carry a premium blanket. And, and I'll tell you why I use those, and I'll show you these here. So, with that being said, let me let me just show you some different uh, wool blankets that I've got down here for you. Um, Let's talk about uh, this guy first, okay? Now, this blanket just arrived, you know, and we were planning on doing this video anyway. Uh, this blanket just arrived in a battle box, mission number 69, uh, Lord and Field. Uh, it happens to be a sister company of Battle Box, and uh, a lot of the things you're seeing in Battle Box now come from Lord and Field. Great business move. Uh, and to be able to put you know, a blanket inside of a battle box. I just thought it was a great idea. Um, this isn't the best wool blanket, you know, on the market by far, but it's not the worst either. But, you know, if you could see here how, how you know, the, the blanket is pretty thin, and it's, it's quite tight. Uh, so the insulating properties on this will not be quite as good as another fluffier, loftier type of blanket. Does that mean this is a dud? No, not at all, because there would be a, a purpose for this blanket, you know. Uh, but something this light, uh, I would I would put in, you know, a vehicle. Uh, I might use it in the summertime uh, because, uh, you know, as I said, you carry a blanket, you've got all kinds of things that you can do with a blanket. Uh, I don't know the price on this particular blanket, but I'm thinking it's somewhere around 40, between 40 and $50. That's what my guess would be. Uh, but, you know, that would be on the, on the cheaper end for a wool blanket. Uh, and I don't know the size of this. It's a little bit bigger than a twin, but not much. Um, and um, I would say that uh, it's 70-30. That means 70% wool, 30% synthetic. Um, and it's not a 100% wool blanket. So <clears throat> you're, this is going to be quick to melt, quicker to melt than a, you know, a wool blanket. Wool blankets are hard to catch on fire, but when they have a blend to them, you can have some situations happen. This isn't going to catch on fire, but I've seen polyester uh, material actually melt on the people's skin because they got too close to the fire. Uh, I don't know if it's polyester that's in this. Uh, I just It just says synthetic, you know, so it's not 100% wool. Again, that doesn't mean that I wouldn't take this out, but I would make sure that it had a purpose. Um, and, you know, what I mean by that, and I'll get back to that when I show you the, the better blankets. So just remember that. Okay, so if you're wanting one of these blankets from, this is the month that you want to jump into Battle Box. Because this month's Battle Box, we're getting ready to do a review later on today. Uh, it's, it's pretty dope. All right, so that's the, that's the first blanket. The second one is 100% wool. Uh, and this comes from 
uh, the Czechoslovakian Army. This is a Czechoslovakian Army blanket, and immediately you see the difference. Um, this isn't a premium blanket, but it is a good blanket. Um, it is more lofty. It has been um, milled, loomed very, very loosely. Not quite as loose as a hand loom. Uh, it's a little thicker than this guy right here. Um, and I believe that we picked this up for probably around $50 to $60 second hand. These were not brand new. Um, but it has served well because, again, it's 100% wool. It traps the heat uh, very well. I've used this blanket um, down to around 10, 15 degrees, not by itself, uh, but with, with another blanket as well. Um, and um, what I used it for uh, was to sleep on top of, two blankets to sleep on top of uh, with the clothing that I had on uh, with a fire, you know. And it was, was not real comfortable, but I didn't freeze to death. Uh, so this would be the second style. Um, and if you, if you don't have the money to buy a high premium, which I have one I'm going to show you here, uh, then, you know, get online, go to, to the Army Surplus store. Uh, there are a lot of places out there um, that carry these blankets. They vary in price, but, but what you want to make sure of is that they are 100% wool, and you want to make sure the size is such that it's going to be able to accommodate you as an individual, not only something to sleep on, but, you know, with a blanket pin, these will go a long way in keeping you warm in the winter time, you know, so I like that. Uh, and then on the premium side here, we have got a wool blanket that is, you know, you can see this is much bigger because it's a queen size. Both of these are that I just showed you are a little bit bigger than twin size, but this is a queen size blanket, um, and this is made by Farabault Mills, uh, and this is, this is a, this is a top-of-the-line blanket. Once again, it is a little bit thicker than the last one, but what really, really puts this into the premium uh, market is the fact that it is 100% merino wool. Uh, do your research on merino wool, the difference between that and regular sheep's wool. It comes from uh, uh, the sheep that are raised in Australia, uh, and they are specifically bred uh, to produce this soft wool, it's not scratchy, man, and is it warm. Uh, a lot of the um, base layers that I have now, I've gotten away from all the polyesters, I've gotten away from the goose down, and I am 100% sold on merino wool base layers, especially the expedition weight. I ride motorcycles uh, when it's 50 degrees out, 40 degrees out, and I stay warm wherever it's touching me. Okay, so it's, it's good stuff. Uh, and Farabault Mills, <clears throat> they have been around for a long time, uh, and they're still cranking out some of the best blankets on the planet. Uh, you know, I know Hudson Bay is a good blanket. I know Pendleton's a good blanket. If you go back many years, uh, California Blanket was a, another one. Uh, you know, Horace Kephart happened to mention California Blanket along with uh, Hudson Bay. Uh, but these will stand right up against those. You know, as a matter of fact, um, Pendleton blankets I've had, and I feel that the blankets that we're seeing from um, Faribault Mills is superior to those for, for different reasons. Now, this one is, is called the cabin blanket, and it, they refer to it as a midweight blanket, you know. We were hoping that we would get one of their heavier ones. We haven't seen it yet, um, but this one has kept me warm uh, down to 40, about 41 to 42 degrees uh, with a light misting rain. And it was such a light mist, it looked like ash floating um, in, in my uh, flashlight uh, at nighttime. But the way that you are able to utilize uh, these blankets down in the low temps is that for me, a blanket like this right here, if you're going low temps, I'd avoid this. I'd avoid these that, you know, I consider these to be probably a, a three-season 
uh, a blanket right here that you could use for what I'm going to tell you. But I fold these up the size of my body to be able to lay on top of. And I will have a browse bed uh, on the bottom layer. And then I will put this blanket the size of the browse bed or the size of my body fold it up so I can lay on it and it will keep uh, the cold from conducting up through the ground. Of course the browse bed is going to have a lot to do with that. And then I use the traditional uh, bed lay or they call it a, a bed burrito, a bed taco or whatever that you wrap up in. Uh, you lay it diagonal and then you lay along the diagonal and uh, fold it up over you, even your head and it kept me warm. It kept me very warm. Um, anything below 40 degrees, I would question whether or not I would want to try it out. Um, I just don't know that it would do it. I am I'm looking forward to seeing Faribault's um, Extreme Blanket. Um, you know, the price difference on these, you know, I told you this one was around uh, forty fifty dollars I think uh, and I definitely know that we paid between fifty and sixty for this uh, surplus blanket this blanket right here from Faribault Mills this is 100 uh, percent merino wool was three hundred seventy five dollars and I know some people might say ouch especially if you're not familiar with merino wool but for those that are that is a very good price for a very good blanket of this uh, superb quality. This is an heirloom blanket. You'll pass this on to your children, grandchildren. It'll go on down through the ages because it is built like that. Very tank tough and it's and it's great, you know. And, and I did have some people have asked me if I seen their extreme weather blankets and the answer is no. I just have not. Uh, but um, we're anticipating at some point before the winter time we will. We've been uh, in contact with them. So I hope that's helped you out. I would rather have a blanket system. Like I told you, I'll carry two blankets with me for the winter time, like this here, uh, uh, wrapped up on the bottom of my pack probably. And it will serve me all the way down to about 40 degrees, probably even down below, you know, lower than that, you know, if I'm dressed in merino wool base layers. But, you know, I'm kind of careful about that, you know. So I hope this has helped you out and answered your question and if you're getting a wool blanket you know if you can if you can afford a merino wool go for that you really want to do and the key is to get a queen size you know your base can be a twin size or a little bit bigger you know just a military blanket style size uh, but when you're talking about really wanting to wrap up in one you're going to have to have a, a queen size that's all there is to it I appreciate you watching, especially appreciate all the emails that you're sending us. Can't answer them all, but I try. Try to group them all up, you know. So until next time, you guys ride free, you live free, and as always, you be safe out there.